And she comes down and she roughly turns me around and starts to frisk me. And I realized that um, they thought I was carrying a weapon and that's Mm. why he'd gone off. Instead of just doing a pat down then and there, he needed a woman to physically touch me. So she's doing this pat down and I'm thinking those men behind me made me think that I was going to have the most horrific death and I got so angry I just pulled away from the Afghan woman, turned around at the men, lifted the hem of my shalwa kameez dress and said, I'm not carrying any weapons, look, and I lifted my dress up. I mean, I, you know, I had the trousers on and sort of lifted my dress up and the men just collectively went <gasps> like that and turned very slowly and then ran as though the devil was clicking at the heels. The woman in the burqa was shocked by this oh inappropriate behaviour. She swung me back round and clashed me over the face oh. uh, because this was highly inappropriate yes. and, yeah. and culturally wrong thing to do. And, well, you know... In, but you were desperate. Defense, yeah, you were desperate. You were trying to say, listen, I'm innocent. I've got nothing on me. Exactly. And I was wanting to go to New York. I knew <laughs> nothing about the culture. Oh. So, you know, um, and then I, uh, I was bundled back into the, the car and, and sat, sent to what turned out to be the intelligence headquarters mm. um, in Jalalabad. And I was held there for the next six days because they thought I was an American spy. And the reason they thought I was an American spy is because they didn't recognize my accent. I come from the north of England by the Scottish border. I live in Scotland now, but you know, this is where I come from. And I said to them, look, we we don't all talk like the queen. And they're sort of looking and they're thinking I'm some sort of G.I. Jane. Do you know, when, when I look, looked back and, and uh, did start to understand the culture, mm. um, I just realised there was a complete clash of cultures. Yeah. Mm. They brought down this interrogation team from um, Kabul, uh, great big massive turbans I didn't realize but the size of your turban indicates the size of your piety and importance and they all had massive big black turbans and big black beards and uh, they sat down um, and set about sort of questioning me through it again through a translator I decided at this point um they were going to kill me. Whatever happens, I'm going to be killed. Doesn't matter whether I'm nice, nasty, mm. they, I'm going to be executed. The one thing that once I'd become accustomed to the idea that I was going to be killed, the next thing that folks well, mind was, well, I don't want to be tortured. Um, so let's cut out the middleman. Let's get straight you know, from, um, from the questions to being put against a wall and shot and and cut out the middleman. So I decided to become the prisoner from hell and just to accelerate my demise. And so I swore at them, I spat at them, I threw things at them, I wouldn't cooperate, I went on. So at this point, they've got you in a cell, they've got you in a cell, and this is when you're kind of just acting out, spitting at them. Yeah. (laughs) And, and their, their response was, why are you behaving mm. like this? You are our guest. We want you to be happy. And my response internally was, why are you behaving like mm. this? You're supposed to be brutal and evil. You know, what don't you understand about your job description? <laughs> so it was a complete clash of cultures. They couldn't look me in the face. That mm. I took as a sign of guilt, which Mm. I've since learned was a sign of respect. 